Greetings in the name of Jesus. This is Brother Minister from Saver Shows Ministries, Let the Truth Be Told campaign. I am going to be talking about a serious issue about homosexuality in the church. Homosexuality in the church is the people who are claiming that they're still following God and being homosexual. Are they really of God? Can you be a homosexual and still say you're serving the God of this Bible? Uh, shouldn't they be able to love whoever they want and still be able to worship and honor God? Can you still honor God and worship God as a homosexual? Uh, is God okay with it? This video is only for those people who claim that they are a follower of the God of the Holy Bible and that that God says it's okay. Though this is only for those people who are inside the church saying that God is okay with this and that they have a relationship with God and that they're still going to get into heaven and God's okay with this. This is not for the homosexuals that are not even trying to put God's name on it. They're going to do what they want to do. They're given over. They're going to be judged. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, I believe it's verse, or chapter 5. Verse 12 and verse 13, Paul was saying, why should we judge? We don't need to judge the people that's outside the church because God already judged them. But those that are inside, we should be judging them. We should be exercising church discipline. According to Matthew chapter 18, I believe it's verse 15 through 18, where if there's someone who's openly practicing sin, we need to pull them to the side, talk to them. So if there's a homosexual in your church, we need to pull them to the side, talk to them, explain to them that God is not happy with this and that God can give them the power to break the bondage that they are in and they're not born this way and let them see that. And if they keep openly practicing it, we take two or three witnesses and tell them and show them that we're not happy with this. God's not happy with this. God doesn't like this and God can fix this then if they don't want to do it the Bible says we're supposed to tell it to the church like in other words if there's homosexuals in the church the pastor should be standing up in the pulpit saying hey gay Bob hey gay Sally you've been practicing this we've been telling you that it's not right and you haven't been trying to do nothing about it you are not able to worship in this place because our God does not accept homosexuality that's the way that it should be done. That's what God prescribed. So you homosexuals or anyone that agrees with the homosexuality or feels like we shouldn't say nothing to them and we don't want to say nothing to offend them and won't tell them nothing. Those people, listen, if you go ahead and, and say that it's okay or make them feel comfortable with it, then that means you're not of God. Am I saying that you got to go bash them and, 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 and tell them you hate them and, and tell them they're going to hell? No, you could tell them they're going to hell if they don't listen to God and if they don't repent and that they need to get worked on by God and let God work on them and that it's not accepted. That's clearly how it should be. So if you have a church and you have homosexuals in your church and they come into the worship service every week, like it's nothing's wrong holding hands are together and they're not trying to break the bondage they're not trying to break the sin then they should not be in your church and if they are in your church and your pastor doesn't say nothing to them then your pastor is possibly gay or your pastor is not saved because he doesn't respect the holiness of God he will say oh well God still loves them and and we got to let them still come listen let them come if they recognize that it's a sin and that they're trying to get help with it. But if they're openly saying this is just who we are and God made us his way and are worshiping God, they have just now polluted the fellowship of God. Bottom line, point blank period. So how does it happen? How does it happen that Eddie Long can still be on TV? He got one of the biggest uh, 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 Baptist churches for, uh, is usually considered a black church in Georgia. How can he still be on TV after it just came out that he had sex with four men in his church, was grooming them up and had sex with four men? Now, this is a bishop who was preaching against homosexuality just a couple years ago, preaching against it, how it's wrong, it's not of God and all this. And, and behind closed doors, he was having sex with men. And his church and him paid them off. I mean, it's open records now. You can see it. And people still follow him and think that he's anointed by God. So are you telling me that a homosexual pastor or a pastor who has sex with men is anointed by God? So you're saying the anointing. The anointing means to have the Holy Spirit in them. So you're telling me that he is the spirit that God gave him causes him or allows him to have sex with men. That's blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. If, if he says the Holy Spirit, the spirit that's in him is of God, but he is practicing homosexuality, 
That is not of God. And the thing is, he's not even openly saying, yeah, I'm sorry or anything. I'm gay or nothing. He's going on like it, like nothing's wrong. He's married, got kids, and still people are following this man. And then this is what's going on in the church, and God is not pleased with that. The Apostle Paul, like in 1 Corinthians 5, 1, he would say, why are you so puffed up? Why are you acting like God's with you? And here you see this sin going on in this church. Y'all ain't doing nothing. Paul said, I might not be there in the physical, but in the spirit, I'm there, and I already judged that man. Turn that man over to Satan so that he will see what's wrong with him and then maybe he'll get saved. That's what the Apostle Paul, how he would have dealt with it. Why are people puffed up when you know you got gay people in the church and you're not saying nothing to them and you're still worshiping and parading around with them? It's foolishness. But this is why God is coming back soon and going to judge the world. He said before he comes back, the times would be like Noah and like Lot. Noah, they was wicked doing whatever they felt in their own ways and God had to send the flood. Next, then Sodom and Gomorrah, homosexual was rampant. Every man was there, uh, homosexuals trying to have, break in the doors and have sex with men. God burned up Sodom and Gomorrah, point blank, period. Not the same way the culture is now is the same way it was back then. And yes, God's going to come back and judge them. 100% and judge them who didn't stand against this foolishness, but yet said that they follow God. Again, I only have a problem with... Uh, 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 I, I mean, I really have the problem with people who say that they're saved, born again, God's spirit in them, that they say that they follow this Bible. They serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They believe in the Savior, the Lord thy God, Jesus Christ. I, I'm talking to you people who think that or is trying to say that God is okay with homosexuality. You got Tone A, who used to be one of the uh, so-called so best uh, gospel performers. Tone A, who when um, G. Craig Lewis was a preacher, came out with the truth about hip hop and was saying Tone A had feminine ways and is probably gay. Tone A wanted to sue him and said that the that uh, G. Craig Lewis is defaming his character. And come to find out a year or two later or whatever it was, Tone A comes out and admits that he's gay. Flat out gay and then says God made him this way and he's baptized, Holy Ghost filled and speaking in tongues and all this all this stuff, but he was gay the whole time. Now you can go on YouTube and see him stripping or whatever, dancing on a bar at a strip club or whatever it was for gay men and says God loves him this way and God made him this way and God gave him the anointing and God had all his music reaching all the people, all these different things and God's okay with it and he starts trying to preach and pastor at his, I think it was his father's church or something and the and the God and the people, who's, other people who say that they're saved like Lexi and all them had interviews with him and act like it's okay for for this to go on and people say oh you need to just pray for people like that no what you need to do is rebuke them and then pray that they'll turn from their foolish ways and admit that they're that they're seduced by demons that's what we need to do. That's the type of prayer we need to do. Pray that they open their eyes and see that it's wrong. But we can't say, oh, just pray for them and let them keep doing what they're doing. You got Donnie McClurkland, Sunday's Best, come out and said he was a homosexual and ended up saying that, oh, he just has homosexual tendencies. But everybody admires this man. It, either you're gay or you're not gay. You have tendencies. You're still gay. You're still going against your nature for affection for a man. And I'm going to show this in scripture that there's no way someone can say they was born this way or, or that's how they naturally are. I'm going to show you. If you say you're following God, I'm going to show you that God says something contrary to that. That's all that matters is what God says. Now, if you're gay and you don't believe in God, that's on you. I ain't got nothing to say to you. We already know what's going on. Go do what you got to do. I'm talking to gay people who say that they follow God and to people who say that we shouldn't say nothing against homosexuality that stick up for the gays. That's what I'm trying to say to you. You had Ted, Ted Haggard. You had Ted Haggard was one of the biggest, or I think was the biggest, uh, 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 had the biggest church of evangelicals out west. This man ends up having sex with a um, 20, -year -old, 20, 21 year old um, young man in his church, and a young man exposed him. And then it all really came out when uh, Ted Haggard had a, a homosexual uh, uh, um, male prostitute tell on him. And then when he was interviewed, he didn't even really deny it. At first, he kind of tried, he tried to deny the sex. He said, yeah, I was at the hotel with him. I was only there to get a massage by him. And I was there to buy uh, meth, meth. But I threw, the, I threw away the meth. Does that make any sense? How was you even with a gay prostitute? Why are you getting your back rubbed by a prostitute? Well, later on, he ended up admitting the whole thing that he had sex now i'm saying he is the national president or whatever he was of the evangelicals so i asked the evangelicals do you still back this and all that ministry he was doing after all these years and the build-up of all their churches notice how many thousands of people 
was following this homosexual man and he, he couldn't have been saved if he was homosexual the whole time. It, it just doesn't make sense. And then yet this man started another church and people are following him. He's homosexual. That means he's against God. He's anti-Christ. He's, an, he's, he's against procreation. He's against it. It's just foolishness. Then you look on the internet and you get Jim Swilly come out, I think a year or two ago. He was a pastor for 20 years at a mega church in Atlanta. And he comes up and says to his church, he says, uh, 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 there's only two things that, that I can't help um, that God has done. One, he said, the calling on my life to be a preacher, that I never had a choice in that. God has made me a preacher, anointed me to be a preacher. And two, me being gay. I don't have no call on, choice in that. God made me gay. And this man got uh, been married two times and got four kids, but it was gay the whole time, he said. And said his second wife knew the whole time that he was gay, but they was yet started a church. And then he comes out years later and, and, and talks about it. I mean, this is damaging other people who want to find out about this God. This is damaging people about if this Bible is true. The Bible speaks against homosexuality, and I'm going to show it. But if the Christian churches or the believers or whatever you want to say, Hebrew Israelites, whatever you are, but you're following Abraham, Isaac, Jacob's God. If you say you're following this holy Bible and then you give in to the homosexuality, that's why people don't know what to believe because the God says one thing and everyone else in religion is saying something different. It's foolishness, man. It's foolish, man. You got a black pastor, I think, down in Georgia named Troy Saunders said it's not a choice. It's just amazing that this is going on. But what I'm trying to tell you is God is pulling back the wool. He's showing you all these so-called Christian celebrities, all these people that everyone's following is following people who are actually anti-God, who are actually doing things that are abomination. They're sitting in the pulpits. That proves you that people can sit in the pulpits, teach you 99% of the truth, and still behind closed doors be doing totally opposite of everything they're preaching and doing everything that's anti-Christ. And people will still still follow them. That's why the Bible said they will in the end times they will not endure true sound doctrine, but they'll go after people, giving them itching ears and all that other stuff. Those people are going straight to hell. So if you are a believer, professing believer of this Bible, if you say you got the Spirit of God in you, then you would have to be able to stand against homosexuality and not accept it in the churches. Now, before we get into the scriptures, Let's just look at some statistics. These are some older statistics from the UK and from the United States. Let's just look at some of these statistics for homosexuality. Homosexuals are more likely to suffer from depression. Homosexuals are about 50% more likely to suffer from depression and engage in substance abuse than the rest of the population. 50% uh, more likely to suffer depression and use drugs uh, over the situation. Uh, pro professional psychiatrists say homosexual men are less happy. 78% of male homosexual affairs, affairs, that means they cheated, relationships entered into with an intent of commitment. They try, They say that they was going in to be committed, but 78% of them lasted less than three years and 12% la lasted less than five years. A high rate of psychological counseling among lesbians. In the National Health Care Survey, 75% of the nearly 2,000 lesbian respondents reported that they had pursued psychological counseling of some kind. Homosexual men are six times more likely to have attempted suicide than heterosexual men. Six times more likely to attempt suicide than heterosexual men. Domestic violence higher among homosexuals. The incidence of domestic violence among gay men is nearly double that in the heterosexual population. This is 1991. Now this is 1991. We're 10, 20 years after that. Higher alcoholism among lesbians. Lesbians are three times more likely to abuse alcohol and to suffer from other compulsive behaviors, according to research in 1994. Now, keep in mind, look, look how far away we are from this. Higher sexual molestation with homosexual parents. A disproportionate percentage, 29% of the adult children of homosexual parents had been specifically subjected to sexual molestation by that homosexual parent compared to only 0.6% of adult children of heterosexual parents have reported sexual relationship with their parents. Having a homosexual parent appears to increase the risk of incest with a parent by a factor of about 50. 
Let's look at this. Gay men's lifespan is shorter than non-gay men. The life expectancy for gay and bisexual men is 8 to 20 years less than for men in general. The risk population at large, 25% of HIV infected in the UK are unaware of their infection. Uh, um, um, now let's look at promiscuity. Now these homosexuals talk about they should be allowed to love who they want to love and they, they make this issue about marriage that they should be allowed to get married. So let's see how pr pr promiscuous these, le these gay people are. Let's see if it's more than the regular people. But this is what I don't understand. Again, if you want to be gay, and you don't think nothing's wrong with having sex with the same uh, uh, gender, go have sex and do what you want to do. Why put God's name on it? And why do we have to change our laws for you guys? Why can't you just do what you do and we have our laws and you do what you want to do? Go have, the, go have, you're having your behavior. You're loving that person. Don't make, we shouldn't have to change the marriage laws. We have to, shouldn't have to redefine what we believe. And the sad thing about it is people are falling for it. That's what's crazy. Why do we have to switch our laws to, to wrap around them? If you want to do what you want to do, we say go ahead, go ahead and do it. But don't try to change our laws or our definitions. But anyways, promiscuity among homosexuals. 28% of homosexual men had one has had more than a thousand partners. That's basically one third of all homosexual professing homosexual men have had at least a thousand partners that they was having sex with. 83% of the homosexual men surveyed estimated that they had had sex with 50 or more partners in their lifetime and 43% estimated they had sex with 500 or more partners, 28% with 1,000 or more partners. Well, I thought you was homosexual because you loved and God made this you want to love this person. You sure enough are spread around a lot of love wanting to have that many partners, but you're saying that you want to just be with this person. Come on, man. This is a this is a promiscuity problem. This is e either way, heterosexual or homosexual. You're out there just having sex rampantly. Anyways, 79% of homosexual men say over half of sex partners are strangers. So that means all homosexual men, they say that they're gay. 79%, that's 8 out of every 10 gay men, say that they have sex with strangers, had sex with strangers. Over, over half of the people that had sex with were strangers. Are you hearing this? 70% said that over half of their sexual partners were people with whom they had sex once. This is amongst the gay people. What happened to the, oh, we love each other, let's get gay marriage, but yet this is, this is the statistics. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is foolishness. Uh, 250,000 people with the HIV in the US, United States, a quarter of the total with the disease do not even know that they are infected by it. 12.1 billion annual cost for the U.S. Future treatment for 40,000 people infected with HIV in the United States every year will cost 12.1 billion annually because of this homosexuality and a disease of HIV. If you believe with this, if you believe the God of this Bible, you would have to stand against homosexuality. You might be thinking, oh, well, I'm not homosexual. Uh, no one in my family is homosexual, so it doesn't affect me. It does affect you for the one, because you send your children to these schools. Now, they are now teaching sex education amongst about homosexuals and teaching them how to teach, how to have sex properly with homosexuals. They are now reading the books and taking out any traditional definition of marriage between man and woman and saying that they, they are not allowed to do that no more. It's already happening in these states. They're now starting to make it to where if a man says that he feels that he's a woman, he's allowed to go into the woman's restroom because he feels like deep inside he's a man. It's already happening, but now that Obama uh, outright says everything's going to be better for the gays and all that, it's going to be a national law to where you can't speak against it and you have to just accept what they are and, and changing the definitions. Before you know it, this is how it's going to affect you. Before you know it, pedophiles are going to now say that they're, they need to lower the age where they can have sex with another kid or whatever because who can determine how young you could be when you love somebody? It's already in the works. It's already in the works. And people's going to fall for it. And you so-called believers will not stand against it because you're worried about losing friends, your gay friends, or worried about the, the, the society coming against you, or you're worried about being politically correct, and you 501c churches that don't teach against it. Uh, 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 you're not allowed to teach against it because now the government won't give you money if you do teach against it. 
and yins will bow down to it and just say, oh, well, we all got to love him. No, this ain't about us loving somebody. Jesus Christ will come down and rebuke you in a minute. His disciples will rebuke you in a minute. Does that mean that they didn't love you? They would tell you flat out, you're a liar, you're a hypocrite, you're a viper, you're all these other stuff. But they were saying it in love, trying to get them to repent. Now, again, let's look at scriptures then. You say you follow this God, then you would have to say that you are against homosexuality. If you say, oh, I'm not sure, you know, let them be, let them go, then you're not following God either, and you're going to end up where they're going to end up. Let's look at Leviticus 18.22. Now, the Bible says what God says about homosexuality. That should settle the deal. So, again, if, you want, if you're gay, go be gay. Just don't put God's name on it, and don't say God doesn't care about it. Yes, he does. Leviticus 18.22 says this. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Something that's an abomination to God is just going to always be hateful and disgusting to God. It's always. It's listed as an abomination. It's hateful and disgusting to God. So, if a man lies with another man as he would with a woman, God said, God said it. I mean, it's clear. If you're going to follow this Bible, this is what God said. It's an abomination. Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 13. Now, you can say that I'm mean for making this video, or you can say I'm mean-spirited for even bringing up the truth about what God's saying about the situation. But let's see what you would probably say about God in, in this one. Leviticus 20, 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lies with a woman, both of them, both of them, have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Now, that's what God said. That's what God said. That's how much he hated it, that back in the Old Testament... That they had to die because of this. That's how serious homosexuality is to God of this Bible. Their blood shall be upon them. So if they was having homosexual relations back in those days, God would tell the people to go kill them. Thank God that we're not under that now. Thank God that we're not. The same principle and the same way God thinks about homosexuality is the same, but we're not under that law where they said to go kill them. But God does say it's still wrong. Deuteronomy 23, 17. Deuteronomy 23, 17. Just showing you that that God does not change. He still hates that. Deuteronomy 23, 17. Deuteronomy 23, 17 says, There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Of the people of God, there should not be no sodomites. Having anal sex and things like that. There should not be no sodomites in God's children's group of his people, according to Deuteronomy 23, 17. Well, you say that's Old Testament. Well, I'm glad that you try to run that. So let's look at if the New Testament speaks against this. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. I'm going to give you time to turn there. So if you're a homosexual, watch this video. Get out of the bed with that gay man in his hairy chest and go grab your Bible and look at what I'm saying. And then kick him out and then you need to drop on your knees and repent. Point blank period. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. This is what the Apostle Paul says. And it's coming to inspire by God. Know you not that the unrighteous, unrighteous, this is right and wrong, unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. This means you cannot get into the kingdom of God because of unrighteousness. And then it says, be not deceived. That's big. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with, uh, with mankind, nor effeminate, nor perverts, or homosexuals. Goes on through the list, nor thieves, coaches, junkers, nor violators, or stilters shall inherit the kingdom of God. You will not. It says, be not deceived. It says, unrighteous, those who are practiced, habitually practicing these sins. Listen, don't be deceived. According to the Bible, don't be deceived and think that you're getting in. And that's exactly what the homosexuals or those who stand for homosexuals, they're deceived. They want to try to come up with all kind of different ways. And listen, this ain't about hating homosexuality. This is hating sin. And hating uh, the behavior, hating the devil that is not making you believe that it's okay to go against God or to, or to put God's name on such uh, wickedness. Bottom line. So, there, there's New Testament. So don't be deceived. Homosexuals, perverts are not getting in. That's what the Bible says. Okay, you want more? Let's look at Romans. This is probably the biggest one. Romans chapter 1. Now, how, how can you read these scriptures 
and claim that it's okay to be a homosexual and a Christian or a true believer or whatever you want to call yourself. Anointed by God. Now, look what the Bible says about this. Romans chapter 1, I'm going to start at verse 21. says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their own in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Drop down to verse 24, Romans 1, 24. Listen, Wherefore God, not the devil, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own heart. God says, go to your uncleanness. God, go ahead. And that's what I'm saying. If you're gay, go ahead. Go do what you're going to do. But don't put God's name on it. Don't try to worship God. Don't say God's accepted with it. Don't do this. God says, give them through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. Excuse me. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. And worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. In other words, they want to make their own rules. They know God, or they know they heard of God, or they know about this, but they still want to say it's okay to, to lay with another man. God says that's dishonorable. So they're now they're trying to change the truth into a lie and say God's accepting it. And they just would rather worship the man who's coming up with these rules saying it's okay in the churches now. And God says, okay, verse 26, Romans 1:26. He says, okay, for this cause, okay, y'all want to do that? Eddie Long, y'all want to do that? Y'all people want to go ahead and let gays in the church? Y'all people want to say, let them go ahead and change the truth into a lie? For this cause, God gave them over to vile, vile affections. Now, the Bible calls, what I'm going to get to, homosexuality, vile affections. These affections that you have, these feelings that you have are vile, according to God. For even their woman did change the natural use. Unto that which is against nature. Listen, those who say I was born this way and I'm naturally born this way and then say you're still following God and God's okay with this, you are lying on God. God does not make gay people because the Bible says right here, there are vow affections and it says women change the natural use. That means naturally a woman should want a man, not a woman. That which is against nature, it says a woman did change a natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman. The natural use. So naturally, man wants woman according to the God of this Bible. So you can't be born that way. It's clear. God would not make you that way. God, would, God does not make that happen. Naturally, it says. And likewise, verse 27, Romans 127, also the men leaving the natural use of a woman. Naturally, the nature itself says that a, a man should want a woman. Not a woman, not a man wanting a man or a woman wanting a woman. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one towards another. Men with men working that which is unseemly. This is the scriptures. And receiving in themselves the reward of their heir, which is me. See, you're going to re you're going to get your reward. You're going to get your HIV. You're going to get your you're going to get your diseases. You're going to get all those different things, and then you're going to get hell. You're definitely going to get hell. Bottom line, verse twenty eight. And as they, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. In other words, you're failed after tested you. That's the deep part. That means once you've been tested. God tried to talk to you, sent someone to talk to you, try to help, is trying to help you out, come to the realization that you're not naturally this way, that God doesn't accept homosexuality behavior, it's not of God. When God tries to do this for you and you just keep denying, denying it, it says God will give you over, let you believe it, let you indulge in all that filthiness, and then it says, verse 32, now here's the, here's the icing on the cake. Romans 1.32 says, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. New Testament. You know the judgment of God according to this homosexual situation. And they that which commit such things, you're worthy of death according to God. Not only do the same, these are people that do the same, they know it's against it, but they do the same thing, but they have pleasure in them that do it. Now, them as those who think that it's okay and keep having gay friends come to your house and have, inviting gay friends to your church and hang with the gay friends and have pleasure in the gay people's relationships. And people say, people say, oh, well, that's, that you're wrong and that's not right and I don't think God will be mad about it. 
and I don't, I don't this and that, those people are going to hell too. When you sit there and say God is okay with it and God wouldn't judge them and this and that, the Bible says, with knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. You homosexuals know the gins are getting it. So this, why don't you just say, oh, I don't care, I'm going to hell and I'm going to do what I want to do. Just say that. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. That's those people who, 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 oh, isn't Johnny and Billy so cute? Isn't Sarah and Annie so cute? Oh, they love one another. Oh, let's just leave them alone and let them be. Listen, you're going to hell. That's the judgment. The only thing, only hope for a homosexual that will not repent is fiery judgment. And I'm going to show you this. Listen, listen. I'm saying this because I want you homosexuals who's watching this, or you people who who are not or won't speak against homosexuality. I want you to change so you can be saved. Second Thessalonians 1:8. Here is your hope if you don't change. Here's your hope, you Christians who just allow it to happen in your church and don't speak up and say you don't want to start no trouble, you don't want to judge, you won't do nothing. Well, why don't you tell them what God said? Are you denying God? Because if you don't want to tell them what God said, listen, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 8 says, And flaming fire, vengeance on them that know not God or obey not the gospel, who shall be punished with an everlasting destruction. Because you didn't know God or you didn't obey God. And I'm telling anybody who's claiming to be a believer of Jesus Christ, a follower of God, anointed by God, the baptism of the Holy Ghost inside your body, the Spirit of God in you, who is a homosexual or stands or, or afraid to stand up against a homosexual or afraid to rebuke them or afraid to tell them that they need to repent, you guys will face the fiery judgment. Now, let's look at this when it says, well, I don't think we should bash them. I don't think we should do nothing. I don't think we should bash them neither. I think we should just tell them very sternly, very rebuke them, rebuke them very sharply, as the Bible says, and tell them that this is not accepted by God. Please quit using God's name and saying God's okay with it. Quit. If you're going to come to church, if you're going to worship God, you have to at least admit that you're wrong and you need to practice repentance. Bottom line. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1 verse 10 says this. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? See, I'm not trying to please you on this video. I'm trying to help you. For if I yet please men, I should not be a servant of Christ. If you have a problem with standing up for what God says is right and, and being very verbal about it and open about it, you are not a servant of Christ. You cannot be a servant of Christ if you're scared to offend somebody because you're telling them what God said. If you're scared to even open up and dialogue about it, you are not of God and you're going to hell with them. It's as simple as that. You are, if you're gay, God is not accepting that. God is against it, according to this Bible. And those people who got gay people in the church, you need to go show them these scriptures, deal with them, talk about it, and this and that. Now, I will say this. Listen to this. We're going back to that 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Remember it said, uh, if you're a pervert homosexual, verse 10 ended up saying you will not inherit the kingdom. Now listen to verse 11. Listen to verse 11, 1 Corinthians 6, 11. And such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Just, what it was saying out of all the list of them people, it said what some of you were, but then they changed, got repented, saved, and sanctified. That means a homosexual can be saved from homosexuality. Because Paul made the list and said, obviously, some of them used to be homosexuals, but then they repented. Obviously, they admitted it was wrong. Obviously, God sanctified them, washed them away, and it was no longer homosexuals. So the hope that you have for homosexuality is you can be saved, but no man or woman can be saved who will not confess their sins, who will not repent of their sins, and not depend on the power of God to break it. Someone who's saying, God made me this way, or I just feel this way, or I don't think it's that bad, will never ever get away from homosexuality because they haven't been fully convinced that God is against it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Homosexual Christian, there's no such thing. Homosexual Hebrew is like no such thing. Homosexual follower of God, no such thing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please do something about this because we need to protect our children. And if our children see this stuff, they're going to be confused about what God said. And I also want to say this. Homosexuality is anti-Christ. 
if everyone became homosexuals, then we couldn't procreate. And when God made man, he made man to give them dominion and told them to procreate. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So the agenda of homosexuality is to stop the birthing of people for God so God can uh, be inside their vessels. So if, if, every, if, if he had made two men, there would be no population. You wouldn't even be here to be gay in the first place. If it was two women created and trying to have sex, there would not be you homosexual wouldn't be here if it was okay. Can you see how it goes against nature? It also goes against nature for the simple fact is a woman cannot plant her seed into a man. A man has to plant her seed into a woman. That's that's nature. That's divine order. All those different things is involved in these different things. So what I want to tell you, God Almighty of the scriptures says, repent or you will likewise perish. That's the truth. And I'm telling it, and I don't care what you say. Homosexuals and those that will stand for homosexuality, you better quit it or judgment's coming at your door. God bless you.